Jillian. Hope everything's going well. I have assigned a working title of this series uh, to be The Siren and the Vig Vindoron. Is that okay? Discussed. I'm here to ask you the Duro questions. Okay, so question number one on Duro. What is the most prominent uh, mineral or rock and soil makeup in the Duro Valley? Um, and what kind of attributes does it have uh, if we know how it's formed, that would be really interesting. And then also, um, how does it add to uh, the vines and to the terroir? The most important rock or mineral um, here in the Doro Valley is very typical, uh, very characteristic and rather unique. Uh, not that many wine regions uh, have it. It's called schist. Uh, schist is a compression of clay uh, that's gone underground, accumulated under the sea a long time ago and then it got compressed and it forms these uh, layers uh, of, of clay. It's also called clay um, slate. Uh, the locals call, his, call it shistu here. Uh, it's essentially a black slate. Uh, so slate is very important to the Doro uh, because it provides minerality uh, to, to, the, to the wines and to the grapes. So that's the first, the first factor. And what they say here is that schist is particularly important because it helps uh, level up the temperature difference between day and night. So schist is quite compact, it's clay, uh, so during the day that can be really hot here uh, in this area, uh, especially in summer obviously, um, the, sh the schist absorbs some of the heat uh, during the day, so it prevents the, the grapes from ripening, from cooking too, too much and preserve some of the fruit and then it gives back some of this um, heat during the night and that helps with the ripening and open, uh, obtaining grapes that have a lot of sugar uh, and that are good for making port wines. Um, so the river the river itself we, we're, we're on uh, right now is also very important in leveling up this uh, temperature because it's a body of water, it's a mass of water, so it also absorbs some of the heat, cools down uh, during the day and then when it gets too cold it restitutes uh, some of this uh, heat. So combination of the schist terroir and the river makes this area not only beautiful uh, but also very unique in terms of the conditions that it provides to grow the grapes. heard Duro called a few things. There's the Duro, there's Duro Valley, and then simply Duro. And I'm wondering, this region is very big, so I'm curious as to what is the most appropriate name for this region. Um, and if it is called the Duro, why is it called the Duro? Um, and how large is it?
So it's true that in English, uh, I guess you could you could say the the Douro, call it just Douro. You could also say the Douro Valley. Um, so let's try and understand what this is all about. Essentially, Douro is a river, and we are we're just cruising on it. We're sitting on it uh, right now uh, on this little traditional uh, ship that they have that cruise the river. And traditionally, those ships. Uh, would also carry barrels all the way down to Oporto, the city, and then from Oporto it would be shipped uh, to the UK, etc. So the river uh, has is, is important for the climate here, but also uh, f it was very important for the trade um, when Oporto um, was was created as a wine region. Anyway, so Douro is a river, so wherever there's a river, there is a valley. So the Douro Valley is, generally speaking, the valley uh, of the river. Um, but Douro itself uh, is also a region, an administrative region, traditional region here in Portugal, and it's just called Douro. So that's why you can also say Douro, uh, and, and then it's obviously a bit wider than the Valais. Um, and then the Douro, it's just an English term uh, to say, to refer, refer to the wine region uh, that is Douro uh, it, as, as a Portuguese region. We're, we're in the northeast here uh, of Portugal, uh, close to the city of Oporto. Hope that makes sense. Question number three, the quintas or the farms that are so prevalent in the region are often um, terraced or their vineyards are terraced and I'd love to hear how they, um, how they first of all on those steep steep hills how they build those terraces. Are they by hand? Do they use machinery? And why the terraces are so important in the farming process for these beautiful vines that are coming out of Douro. Quintas. Um, so Quinta, you hear, when you hear about Douro, you hear about Quinta, uh, and Quintas quite a lot. What are Quintas? Uh, we are actually passing by a very, very famous one uh, here in the region. So Quintas are essentially farms or properties uh, here in the Douro. Uh, they're not, the locals told me that they're not necessarily specific to uh, grape growing, uh, whether it's fruit, they're growing fruit, they're growing uh, cereals, well there's not much cereals here in the Douro but more generally in uh, Portugal. So Quinta is essentially uh, a property but obviously here in the Douro Quintas are vineyards, uh, vineyard properties uh, often with uh, residents, a residential house and uh, a little winery uh, to make uh, the wine as well. Yes, Kelly, um, so let's talk about terraces. As you can see, uh, they're a very important feature here uh, in the landscape. Um, essentially, why? So, why terraces here? Essentially, and it's quite Understandable slopes are very steep here, uh, so terraces were a way to grow the grapes and prevent all the terrain to be flushed uh, into the river when it rains uh, here. Uh, how are they made? Uh, traditionally they were essentially made by hand uh, using the local slate rock and stacking those pieces of rock together to form walls. Uh, obviously that would take a lot of effort, a lot of um, hands uh, to, to do, so nowadays it's not very economical to do that, so terraces aren't generally, new terraces aren't generally built. Those terraces we, we're seeing on the river here 
were built hundreds of, of years ago. Um, you know, only very special little quintas would sometimes renovate uh, the, the, the terraces these days. So nowadays, um, they generally level up the terrain and they, they plant a bit more traditionally. Um, on, on the hills, uh, which makes it better for using machinery, uh, it's cheaper to plant and you know the result is still uh, very good. But those old traditional terraces uh, are still used uh, to this day. So Portugal is typically known for port, or it's been known historically for port, for the creation of port. Um, it seems that they have really taken a strong interest in still wines, and for that I am very excited. I'd love to hear your uh, perceptions on the type of wines they're making, what they're doing well, and what we should be on the lookout for. Uh, whether it's in Europe or in the U.S. I'd certainly love to know uh, what kinds of wines we should be uh, looking for and, uh, and what you enjoyed while you were there. As for which wines to look out for uh, from the Douro here, um, I've only been here uh, 24 hours um, and I've, I've visited here this Quinta, Quinta do Corte. For sure, uh, I can see it here at the Quinta do Corte and elsewhere. Uh, the Douro Valley and, uh, is not all about ports uh, anymore. It's clearly about dry, dry red wines uh, predominantly. They do make some rosé here and there and, and a little bit of whites, but it's mainly Red, red, dry wines. Uh, they're really, um, they're quite uh, full-bodied and 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 rich, uh, but they have this sort of elegance again from the from the chest and from the mineral minerality in the soil here. Um, so somewhat of a French finesse uh, to them, but you know, with a bit more body and, and structure. the little ride here in the Douro and I hope to see you soon in the next episode of the wine siren and the vigneron cheers and I think that's it